such a bill to use a mic, but please tell me if I work my arms around and you can't hear me. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, I'm going to talk about our experience of building a Java developer community, uh, the Wellstead community at IBM. Um, and this was around our Liberty application server, and I'll give a little bit more context about this in a minute. So I'm a developer advocate, uh, not a developer by background. Uh, we have a tech, technical evangelist separately, and he does the building of the cool demos and works with developers and goes out to conferences and things like that. So I'm a bit more the people side. My background is psychology and human factors, and since uh, 13 years at IBM, um, the first few years as a technical writer, I did user experience design, and the last couple of years, two and a half years, I've been developer advocate for um, Liberty, which I'll explain in a sec. So, yeah, a little bit of background for the terms before I start using them. Um, Liberty is a Java, Java EE application server, and it's, Java EE is an extension of the Java language, uh, it provides extra capabilities to make it easy to create websites and things. And so you can add things like security, um, uh, web socket support, batch support, all sorts of things. Um, and IBM has two Java application servers that you can run these Java EE applications on. Um, the old one, the 20 year old web application server, or WAS as we call it, um, it's big, it's stable, it's powerful, it's flexible, all the good things that admins and operations like. Developers, not so much, we found. Um, so we also have Was Liberty, which is only about three years old, and that's um, lightweight, it's modular, it starts really fast, um, you don't have to restart it all the time when you make changes to your application. So overall, that, the idea was that was great a developer experience. But from the start, we realised that we have to build a community around this because developers expect community support. And that's, the, that's what we call the boss curve. So what do we mean by community? Well, our overall aim is that we want to um, get Java developers to love Liberty as much as we do. And I'm not exaggerating to say that there are people in our team who genuinely love this software. Um, and I've not seen that in Middleware quite so much before. Um, so we want them to tell their friends to use it as well. And in practice this means we want to provide a lot of resources so that people can actually try it out and try using um, Liberty. So uh, lots of free uh, articles, all our downloads, so we provide Liberty for free, and you can download it, and as a developer, you can just use it forever, there's no time on it. Um, lots of articles, we put sample code out on GitHub, um, stuff on YouTube, uh, all various different resources like that. We also go off to conferences quite a lot, and as well as the obvious IBM ones, um, we try to get out to as many community conferences as possible, um, and meetups and things, so that we've been to DevOps and JFocus and Agile on the beach, all the cool ones. <laughs> so, um, okay. um, so as part of what we would hope to bring to a, conf a, a community is that we then have not only us, and us as Liberty developers answering questions to the community, but have people helping each other within the community and sharing the skills. And that can be answering questions on Stack Overflow, uh, writing blog posts, um, any way at all that they want to share. Um, and I think that's really important. I think, I think it was Rob alluded to it earlier, that you need that kind of thing to scale. Um, you can't just operate on, I mean, I would like our Liberty developers to be doing more, um, contributing more to the community, and answering more questions, writing more articles and things. But ultimately that won't scale. We need the community itself to, in general, to be helping each other. And finally, um, I think it's really, really important that all this comes with openness and sort of being a genuine, authentic interaction with people. So when somebody thinks that they're asking a Liberty developer a technical question, they do actually get an answer from a Liberty developer. Um, and it's not somebody in marketing or something um, giving them a response. 
Um, and part of how we're trying to be more open generally and show that we're not aliens in a corporate environment, and we are developers like developers anywhere, um, is we're doing these regular betas, we try and get more of our uh, limited developers out on, on, in the real world, go to conferences and things. So where do we start? I don't know how well you can see that, but that, that's from a whiteboard session at DevOps, which is a developer conference in uh, Belgium. And they had a session comparing Java application servers, and they put up various comments about them. You can see in the middle, this is before Liberty, where they had a column with it on, and people got quite carried away putting comments in there. <laughs> Not always nice ones. So we had things like epic fail, um, WebSphere is mostly a generator of frustration and consulting fees. Um, <laughs> and the name of WebSphere with an F. Um, yeah, so developers weren't keen on what I think we could conclude. So back at base, we had to think about it. And in 2012, we brought out Liberty, which, as I say, was lightweight and uh, intended to have a better developer experience. And as I also mentioned, from the start it was accepted that that needed to include a developer community uh, to provide the support and just uh, get people trying things out for themselves as developers. It did surprise me when I started to write this talk that there was actually no pushback against doing this because at the time this wasn't common in IBM to be, except for certain pockets, it wasn't common to be doing this developer community outreach. And yet the development team itself, um, the product management, the architecture team, none of them seem to push back against, as far as anyone remembers. Um, nobody seems to be pushing back against this idea of developing some resource and effort into having a developer community. But it turns out it wasn't that new to this team. Before Liberty, the developers on that team had been working on the Apache Ares project, which, as it sounds, is an open source Apache project. And Ares is actually, actually provides the OSGI component into Liberty and into the original WAS product. So they have been working with um, open source communities for a while. And they even had in 2009 a technical evangelist, Zoe Slattery, um, and she previously worked on the PHP project at IBM. And she provided, um, the, she contributed a whole lot of IBM and PHP tests back to the PHP community. So she was very familiar with how open source communities worked and the mailing lists and how to, um, how to communicate and not just piss everyone off. So she brought all that forward into the Aries project and sort of taught the Aries team how to be good citizens in the open source communities. Um, some of the things she did really pushed at sort of what IBM had done before. <coughs> So for instance, she organized a bunch of um, open source conferences or uh, developer conferences and events at IBM locations. One of them was the Apache UK retreat, which she organized on the lawn at IBM Hersley, which if you haven't seen is a big mansion house with big lawns and things. It's very nice. Um, lots of lawns and we could have a campsite on it. Um, she also organized a book bar camp London at the IBM South Bank location. And uh, apparently it went really, really well, apart from the man's bomb that got flushed down the toilet. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the plumbing wasn't happy. So, we were starting a developer community. Um, we needed a website. Um, and we didn't want a corporate IBM website. So this is what IBM's what IBM.com site looked like back in 2011. Um, and it's not meant to be developer friendly, it's not aimed at developers. Um, and it's a different style, it's formal, it's not updated that regularly. It's uh, all my marketing, so it's probably updated maybe once a quarter or sections of it are updated that frequently. Um, what we wanted was more like jazz.net, which that's what it looked like then. That had been around since about 2007, and that was the one area of IBM that did focus on developers specifically. Um, Jazz.net came out of the Rational organization, and Rational was a company that IBM acquired in the early 2000s, and they produced developer tools, and 
Um, I think it's fair to say they've always worked slightly differently from the rest of us in software group at IBM. And they basically didn't ask permission, they just did it and got on with it, and they did a really cool website. And differently from the corporate environment, the corporate type of website, you've got like blog posts with individuals named and photographs of them, and it's a lot more personal and friendly um, than a corporate site would be. So this is what we wanted to be. Unfortunately, IBM's developer works organisation didn't agree. And I just thought that wasn't part of Developer Works. Um, developer Works is a separate organisation within IBM. Um, it's still there now. It's good now. Um, in 2011, it was very much, I guess, like a magazine style. It, they published articles. They it took a while to get the, an article published. A frustrating, long time sometimes. Um, and that would be published, and then people would read it, and it got a lot of page views. So they thought it was successful. And they, but they didn't. They weren't engaging with the people who read the articles. So, um, and it wasn't very interactive. It had quite a rigid template style, so we couldn't actually custom. Uh, when we were initially told about the option of going with Developer Works, we couldn't uh, change the template. We couldn't change the look and feel. Or had extra capabilities. Um, so. The upshot was that we were actually hosted by Developer Works um, through a compromise of cost and politics. Um, but what they did let us do was have some uh, ability to customise our site. But even then, it was still quite hard work to get additional capabilities added, like um, forums that embedded within pages and things like that. So it wasn't really the kind of thing we wanted, but it was a start. And after the first release of Liberty in 20, June 2012, um, later in that year, we started to do more regular updates of the website and getting new articles up and things. And they could see that it was actually working. What we were trying to do was working. People were coming, they were seeing what we were doing, and they were interacting with us. So we, so the developers started to change their feelings about it. And the following year, they had a reorganisation. And they um, actually set up a team dedicated to produce, to provide support to groups within IBM who wanted to produce, um, wanted to build developer communities. Um, so, and that team was actually led by Seth Packham, who worked on the original Jazz.net. So it also came around. Um, we had to go through a lot of pain to get there because we were kind of first after Jazz. Um, but now we're actually working in the way that Jazz was originally, and we sort of brought developer works around with us. Um, and uh, they're now brilliant team to work for it, and they do an awful lot for us. So we had a website. We had needed to um, get content for it. Um, all our content was um, to be provided by developers within the Liberty team, at least for a start. Um, we, towards the end of 2012, we decided that we were going to have a strict weekly publishing schedule and to get proper cadence going, make sure that the website itself stayed fresh and people actually found it useful. Um, that's quite hard when you're dependent on developers who have a day job to actually produce articles and sample code and things for you. Um, and at the time, there was very much a feeling that doing that sort of thing was additional to their day jobs. So some people were keen and enthusiastic who did that, but it was always seen as this extra thing, and when things got really busy, it was just too much to take on. So, um, we did, this is before my time, I said we, <laughs> but we did put um, one of the developers in charge of doing all this publishing. Um, and he, Ross, he worked really hard on it. He was allocated a day a week to work on this, um, which if anybody's managed, news, like website content or magazines, newsletters, it's actually really hard to get content out of people and publish it so frequently. Um, and he uh, came in one Monday morning fresh from a three-week caffeine detox and was literally drinking raspberry tea, I think. And by the next day, he was on Red Bull. And it was just incredible. He was there at 11 o'clock at night on Wednesdays trying to write an article because nobody else provided him for him. Um, it was at that point we realised that probably we needed somebody working dedicated on this project. You can't just do it on people's spare time. Um, and that's when I was brought into the team. 
So it's for the first year that I was there, it's probably it was still pretty hard uh, getting content out of people. I had the extra motivation to get people doing stuff because not being a developer, I couldn't just write it for myself on the whole. Um, so I had to persuade the development team to uh, the Liberty developers to actually help contribute. And it was starting to get a little bit better. They were starting to get more enthusiastic about it. In about June this year, we had a really important release for Liberty, and um, one of everybody got all excited in marketing and um, management and everyone who they wanted more articles on last stuff. And I'm like, well, okay, somebody's got to write them. So the, exec the executive director sent an email around to the development teams saying, please contribute, you know, see it as part of your job to contribute. And it really surprised me, but it actually, it actually worked. Um, and I've, since then, it's continued working. So I get people who are quite happy and actually volunteer to write articles, to write sample code in GitHub, and things like that. So that's actually been really, really good. And we've got to a point now, I think, where quite a lot of the Liberty developers will create themselves a task um, to say, yes, I'm going to write some code for Liberty. But then they'll create a task that says, I need to write an article about this or users so that they know how to use it or the best way to use it or you know a sample application that they can use to show to learn it. So that's really, really good, especially for my sanity. Um, but while we've got um, articles and samples coming in quite easily now from the Liberty Development Team, it's a little bit harder to get them um, sort of getting involved in things like social media, answering questions on Stack Overflow and going to conferences, submitting uh, abstracts to conferences. And I think part of this is because it's harder to time box that sort of activity. Art articles and uh, sample code are quite easy to say, I'm going to spend so many hours on this, and then it's done and it's out of the way. Uh, social media tends to be a bit more drip, 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 so you have to take, you know, you're not quite sure how long it's going to take you, and it can be a time sink if you like it. Um, answering questions on Stack Overflow could could take two minutes or it could take a day to find the answer to something. And conferences I think are just quite scary um, for a lot of developers who aren't familiar with going to them. So I've seen you developers do tend to go to conferences. People like Holly here, she spent hours and hours of her spare time you know, creating that ball. It's like a soft squidgy beach ball thing and it's got a PC Duino in it that connects wirelessly to a laptop and to the cloud and she does a whole demo with it and lights flash. Um, so she does that, a lot of people don't. Um, and so some of it's just me there to provide them with encouragement to do these things, help them to come up with ideas for things to submit to conferences, um, maybe try and take them along to conferences to just see what they're like. But then also, when it comes to just talking on social media or, or answering questions on Stack Overflow, if they're, they're often just afraid that they're going to say something wrong or they're going to say something stupid that gets them sacked. And so part of it is just showing them there, there are guidelines. Um, and if we just follow those guidelines and use the common sense, they'll be fine. Um, everyone makes mistakes once, so long as you don't keep making, making mistakes, it's fine. And so it's that kind of giving them the encouragement, explaining what a hashtag is even, um, where it's necessary. So it's that kind of mentoring role, try, just trying to encourage the internal Liberty development community that they can contribute to the wider WASDEV community as well, and the wider Java, Java community. And the thing is that that sort of thing can't be forced because one of the important parts of, one, one of the really important things I think of social media and the other sites like that is that it's genuine and you get people's enthusiasm coming through. And if you try and force that by saying, oh, you must tweet five times a day on this particular subject, people can tell. It's, it's you know, it just, it just looks crap. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we don't want that. And somebody who doesn't want to do that kind of thing, don't make them do it. It doesn't matter. If they just want to sit down, head down, cut, that's absolutely fine. So an email from an executive isn't going to help that kind of thing. It's going to have to come from from within. It's going to have to come from the developers themselves. Um, and I can just be there to help identify the people who sort of want to do it but are a bit scared, and then to help them and um, do it. 
One of the most frustrating things since I joined um, the Liberty Development Team has been our relationship with the marketing organisation. As a developer advocate, I work within the development organisation. Um, I don't know what it's like in other companies, but in IBM, marketing is very separate from development. We're sort of parallel. We talk across a um, bit. Um, and in the recent months, I've learned that we have complementary roles. And when we do it properly, it actually works quite well. Um, but we have different goals, different short-term goals, different metrics, different timelines that we're working to. And so we, we just clashed a lot for a start, for a long time. Um, frankly, yeah, it was a bit rubbish. Um, we felt that marketing didn't understand, we, development, felt that marketing didn't understand developers. And we were also hugely protective of the ones was the .NET site. Um, we were really worried that it was going to end up becoming a product marketing site where everybody wanted to put marketing information on. And we were determined it had to stay for developers and be written by developers. So, it, yeah, I think, well, we certainly didn't help. Um, but, uh, yeah, we had marketing as an organisation in IBM had a big reorganisation earlier this year. And I think that helped a lot because we started to focus more on developer marketing. Also within the development team, we had a new manager join who had both a technical and a marketing background. So he's helped a lot in um, helping us communicate from development to marketing at least. Um, and I think, yeah, that's definitely helped an awful lot. So now we are a bit more complimentary, though we still often disagree. So what marketing we found is good at is awareness and uh, raising awareness of say liberty and hooking people in um, but what they can do shiny really really well and developers love shiny that's fine but what developers aren't convinced by shiny so you then have to show the detail provide the technical information and um, if marketing say this is an amazing high level solution you know you must try this developers want to know Okay, how do I try this? What do I do to make this work in reality? So, um, for, for us, I think the biggest difficulty we had was um, quite early, well, very early on from the start of wasdev.net, we um, decided we weren't going to have a registration wall in front of our downloads. So, as I said, the downloads were free and easy to get, and we worked really hard to get rid of all the many, many license clicks that um, we had previously done in IBM. Um, but uh, this meant that, so we didn't have developers register for downloads, but this meant that marketing couldn't collect sales leads, and they couldn't collect people's contact details, and this was a problem for them. We didn't care, because we just wanted as many developers as possible to download Liberty and try it out. We didn't care who they were specifically, and we certainly weren't going to contact them. And our argument was that any developer, even if they do fill in the right information in the form anyway, even if they get as far as filling in the form, they don't just turn away, because we'd seen that maybe 60% of people turned away when we had a registration wall. Um, if you then cold call them, they're going to be really unhappy. And chances are, especially in enterprise environments, they're not going to have the power to buy, buy anything anyway. So it seemed really pointless to us, and we talked this through and through and through, but at the end of the day, marketing had to have a metric that they could report back to the business to show success of campaigns. Um, but we were providing that, so we were, we were, I'm sure we were seen as obstructive, um, and they started to work around us the end of last year, beginning of this year, and as a result, we lost out because we other products were getting the attention from marketing that we could have been getting and weren't. So everybody loses. Um, part of, a big part of the problem is that building a developer community is very organic. It's very long term. There's never going to be a done done, and um, so we. We see that that's not a problem after three months if you can't then see that there's a you know absolute metric to measure at that point. Marketing need to work on short-term campaigns. So every month or every three months, they need to start, start and finish a campaign and then report back on the success of that campaign. 
Um, we in development have been really fortunate to have supported management um, and they understand that it's really difficult to quantify uh, the, the vitality of the community. And we do feedback quantitative measures, metrics to them, so things like numbers of downloads, number of visits to the website, all that kind of thing. And we're still investigating further what sorts of things we can measure. But we also try to collect qualitative measures, so we try to collect quotes from people on things they've said about us, whether it's good or bad, but just kind of try to use those as evidence as well. Um, my favourite one that we sort of agreed on early on was how warm and fuzzy does it make us feel? when somebody says something about us. So if you see a bunch of IBMers retweeting the same link over and over to each other, that makes us feel a lot less warm and fuzzy than say if Docker writes a, a Docker links to us from a newsletter or an Oracle evangelist and um, writes a blog post about us or just somebody says something nice on Twitter about us or nasty even as engagement. <laughs> I'm not kidding. So despite all this, um, all our differences, um, I think we are getting better at working in marketing. Um, well, we, we definitely have a better relationship. Um, they now defer to us a bit more about how to talk to developers. Um, and the flip side as well is the other way around. We also consider their requests more. Uh, we don't just dismiss them out of hand because you know it's marketing. Um, so I think it is getting better. We're getting there. Um, so one of the things I mentioned was about protecting the wasdev.net web website from becoming a, um, becoming a marketing product marketing site. And probably one of the hardest things, for, the biggest challenges for me every day is uh, to keep that focus on who the end user is, who our target audience is as developers as opposed to system administrators or IT managers or CTOs or anyone else. Um, with the, as wasdev.net starts to get more and more visitors to it, it was seen, it starts to be seen within IBM, within the development organisation, the product management, as being uh, a place to publish anything that we needed to get out into the outside world. It didn't matter what it was. And that, people had the right intentions in that they, Genuinely, you know, sometimes it was because there was a customer problem and they needed to get information out to help them, but it often wasn't necessarily appropriate to the developer audience. And the big giveaway is if I asked an author of an article who's the target audience and they just said everyone or everyone who uses Liberty, it's with my UX hat on, that's usually a bad sign. So, in UX terms, we have primary users versus secondary, maybe tertiary users. And for us, developers is the main user, and I have to keep, keep getting that across to people within the organisation. Um, because you don't, as a developer, you don't really want to have to wade through articles about how to cluster 10,000 servers for high availability failover before you can find out how to use things like WebSockets or JaxRS or something to build your application. So, yeah, wasdev.net is there to support building the community. It's not there as a website in itself. In its own right, and everything that we publish on it needs to support the aim of building this community. So, it is really hard to say no sometimes. Um, somebody comes to me with an article that says um, that they spent hours on, they've had somebody review, possibly someone quite senior has spent the time reviewing it. Um, sometimes we've had executives write articles for us that aren't appropriate for usdev.net, and you have to go back and tell them. And, my manager kind of pointed out that it's potentially career limiting, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> so far it's been fine. Um, and that was a relatively easy one to persuade, so it wasn't too bad. But um, we do win lots of and lose some. There are a lot of grey areas. Um, we just have to find our way through it. And one of the ways that I've done that's helped, one of the things I've found to help this is um, being really clear in myself who who the target audience is. And I think it's got easier as we've started articulating this. So, early on when I joined the Liberty team, partly for my own purposes, I documented who our target audience was. Um, so, Java Re developer, and I used an empathy map, which is, this is just off Flickr, um, but it's, 
it's the, this idea that you're documenting all the things that a developer hears, so it might be recommendations from other developers about what tools to use. Um, the things they do, like going to conferences, things that they see around them in their physical environment, but also on their screen, and also quotations from them, things that they say. Um, and a lot of this information came from face-to-face -face conversations with developers, Java developers, but also from interacting with the um, open source communities. Um, and also, uh, we got a lot of the quotes off Reddit, um, because people on Reddit are quite honest about what they think. Um, So having a clear definition helps. Um, it helps me have the confidence to say no to people, but it also just gets clear in our head what the boundaries are between what we will and what makes sense. So in summary, what we learned. Um, early on we had to be clear about what we meant by community and that we had to challenge the status quo at IBM in order to get what we wanted. We could have just gone down the route of following what developer works did at the time, um, I don't think we would be where we are today. We certainly wouldn't be as far along as we are or we think we are. Um, and possibly developer works wouldn't be quite as, fast, as quickly as have come around to uh, taking the more jazz.net approach. Um, the, the work needs to be funded properly. Um, I mean, there's never enough people to do stuff, but um, trying to manage even just the worst of .net website, let alone anything else which is too much for one developer in one day a week. Um, you, you need somebody focused on it a bit more than that. So, yeah, funding it properly. Building the internal sub-community, that's the Liberty Development Community. That's something that I need to focus more on now, I think. Um, try and get more of the developers involved in things like Stack Overflow, answering questions on IBM hosted DW answers, Q&A side, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, yeah, understanding the development and marketing relationship, it's an interesting one, and we're, we're getting there, we're doing better, I think. And then making sure that we always defend the target audience so we don't just completely lose focus on what we're trying to achieve. Is it working? Well, yes, we think so. Um, we, in quantitative terms, the lines are going up, um, we get more downloads, we get more visitors, all the things that we try to measure. On the whole, we think they're going up. Um, qualitatively, warm and fuzzy measures, but well, we're definitely feeling warmer and fuzzier. More people talk to us. People don't just dismiss us out of hand as being WebSphere. We're now a liberty and people recognise us for the product that we're talking about. And we get some nice feedback. So um, well, I think one of the uh, benefits of having done beta releases, so Almost all the way through Liberty, we've done month, uh, regular betas. For the past 18 months, we've done monthly betas. So if, almost every four weeks, we've released whatever cut of the code we've got. Um, and that's been absolutely brilliant, because instead of 18 months of radio silence before we did a release, we were able to have people within the community writing blog posts about the latest beta, commenting on where we were up to relative to other, other commercial products, and also give us feedback that we could then respond to in time for the next beta and so we're sure that we're actually taking into account what people were saying to us. Um, yeah, we're getting just generally more people are talking to us, which is great. So in 2015, we're still getting called WebSphere. We still haven't quite shaken that. But at the end of last year, somebody in the Java development community actually called us awesome. Um, and that made us feel very warm and fuzzy. But thank you.